TypeScript 5.5 was released the other day, and there are two new features that are really saving me a lot of keystrokes. I'm going to show you what they are right now. The first one is inferred type predicates. You're probably familiar with the idea of a type predicate, which is a function that you can use to narrow the type of a particular value. Let's say, for example, we have this array, which has some numbers and some undefined values in it. Of course, the inferred type of array here is an array of either number or undefined. Now, when we filter in this case, we're saying anything where n is not equal to null, which is going to filter out any null or undefined values. And so we know that the result is an array with numbers only. However, notice we're running here with TypeScript 5.5 and TypeScript doesn't recognize the narrowing that we've done. It thinks that the nums only array is still an array of numbers or undefined values. Now in TypeScript 5.4, there is a way to combat this. What we can do is set a return type on our predicate here. N is number. Now, the way this works is, of course, a type predicate is a function that needs to return a Boolean. If this function returns true, then treat N as the type number. And if it's false, then it's not that number. Now, when we set this type predicate return type here, now nums only is an array of numbers only. Now we have to do this in previous versions of TypeScript because the inferred return type is Boolean. So what has changed in TypeScript 5.5? Well, basically, instead of inferring Boolean, TypeScript can now infer n is number, assuming that the behavior of this function actually narrows enough for TypeScript to figure that out, which is great because previously when we explicitly tag this function with this return type, it's kind of up to us to make sure that this function actually does implement the checks that we say it does. For example, instead of doing it this way, we could do bang bang n, which would basically remove null or undefined, but it removes any falsy value. So that would also include zero. And in this case, TypeScript doesn't complain because it knows this is still returning a boolean. However, we are not actually returning true for every number. So let's switch this over to TypeScript 5.5. Let's remove this explicit return type. Now with this incorrect implementation of is this a number, we can see TypeScript recognizes we're not actually properly narrowing uh, to one specific type. And so it just doesn't change that type at all. However, if we change this back to n does not equal null, then we can see now we're correctly inferring the type predicate return type. We have number array. You could do this in any number of ways. Instead of n does not equal null, we could do uh, type of n equals number. Maybe that's the, uh, the safest way to do this. Just go directly for what we're looking for. And so now you can see we have number array. So this is not behavior that we couldn't get in TypeScript before, but now TypeScript saving us a bunch of keystrokes, we no longer have to add that return type on our type predicates, assuming the type predicate actually narrows in a way that TypeScript can understand. I love this because not only is there less typing for me, but also it means that we can use an inferred type where TypeScript actually can figure that out. And so if we need to change the functionality of that type predicate, uh, TypeScript can continue to infer or let us know if we've now broken a successful inference. Uh, let me, let's come up with a quick example of what I mean by that. Okay, here's an example of what I mean. We have a couple of different user types here, admin, standard, read only, they each are tagged with this uh, discriminating uh, field. And then we have an is admin type predicate here, which can take any user and will tell us if this is an admin user. Now, right now we're basically doing this as in kind of a contrived way. We're checking to see that the type is not standard, which in our current definition of user means it is an admin user. Of course, you can probably guess we're gonna add read only user here to this union in a second. But now if we have our users array here, and then we try and filter for is admin, of course, because our predicate is tagged with the right return type, admins here is correctly admin user. Okay, let's drop this return type for a second. And if we go back to admins now, you can see that we are not actually narrowing the type here. This is still a user array. Let's switch to 5.5. So now TypeScript should be able to infer based on our union and our type predicate that is admin is actually a narrowing function. And actually you can see the inferred type right here, you is admin user. So if we look at admins here, now this is an array of admin users. Let's say we add a new type to this user union we add read-only user. Well, now if we look at admin, well, okay, so it is actually still getting an inferred uh, predicate, but it's no longer just admin user. It's admin user or read-only user. And of course, if we go down here to admins, we can see the same thing, admin user or read-only user. Now, we're not actually doing anything with admin users here, but assuming we were then looping over this and looking for some admin-specific field, then we would start getting type errors. And of course, certainly, if we add 
admin user array as a type here. Now we can see that we definitely are getting a type error here. This is a really handy way to have safer type predicates. If you let the types be inferred, when the types that they're narrowing change, this the inference will also change. And if you have type errors, those will be cascaded through your system and you'll have a chance to fix those. Of course, remember, if we had you is admin user still on here, then we get no type errors here, even though we are in 5.5. We're not letting the inference happen. And so TypeScript is letting us decide and assuming that we get it right. So that is the first TypeScript 5.5 feature that I find really useful and saving me a lot of time. The other one here is actually also about type narrowing. This is called control flow narrowing for constant indexed accesses. So here's the idea. We have some type here. We don't really know what the values of these keys are. We have some key and we want to check to see if that's a string, if it is a string, we want to two uppercase it, right? Some kind of contrived logic here, but you can see in TypeScript 5.4, we have an error here. The problem here is that even though we've just checked to see if object at key is a string, TypeScript doesn't actually keep that narrowed because we're indexed into an object here. And you could kind of see why. I guess there are a couple of things we could do here. For example, we could do something like this. We could actually change the value of the key, right? Or we could actually, because the type of this is unknown, we could even change the, the type of it. And so I think for reasons like this, TypeScript previously kept this as an unknown type and didn't actually allow a condition like this to narrow it. There were ways to get around this in TypeScript 5.4. We could do something like value equals this. And then of course we could check on value and now value is properly narrowed, we have value as a string, right? If we could basically get a direct reference to this value, then TypeScript would allow us to narrow that because of course, changing the object or the key now no longer affects that value. However, if we change this to TypeScript 5.5, you'll see that this has changed. Now, obviously I still have these lines in here, so this is gonna throw an error, but if we remove that, TypeScript can now tell whether or not we're making changes to these objects, and if we're not, then it will keep that inferred type or that narrowed type for us. And of course, this saves us keystrokes because we no longer have to pull this out into another variable or destructure or kind of use some roundabout technique in order to get a stronger type on this value if our logic is allowing us to narrow it. Of course, if we go ahead and change the key, that now is an error again. If we change that value directly in the object, that is an error again. Uh, even Notice that even though we've changed this to a number, it still considers this unknown. So I, I can't say that I know exactly what's going on behind the scenes here in TypeScript, but I think this is a pretty common pattern where you want to be able to check the value of a key within an object and then operate on it if you can successfully narrow that. And so this new narrowing functionality is also a pretty handy thing in TypeScript 5.5.